p.m. Uh, call this meeting to order. Roll call. Escuchar present. Nereida Cantu present. Armin Garza present. Alda Benavides present. Uh, Dr. Uh, Science Educator Thank you, Mr. Salinas. Can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, public comments, sir? We have no public comments. Okay, next up with the approval of the collector report. So moved. Have Second. a motion? Second. And a second, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. So we can go ahead and do for the approval of the minutes for items one, two, three, four, five, and six with a correction, Dr. Science. Can you do yes. that before? We do have a correction on the special called meeting on March the 8th, 2021. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, pass it on to you, Doc. Thank you, Mr. Salinas. The first item on the superintendent's report is uh, enrollment report for April 6, 2021. On that day, we had 12,239 elementary students, 14,453 secondary students, for a total of 26,692 students, which is 713 students less than on that day last year. The next item on the superintendent's uh, Dr. report. Sainz, is uh, there an, are there any comments or questions, excuse me, on the enrollment report? Just the number of students that showed up on, on Monday? Yes. On Monday, April 12th, we had 3,355 elementary students on campus. We had, four, excuse me, 946 middle school students on campus, 651 high school kids on campus, for a total of 4,952 students on campus on Monday. And elementary? Elementary count was 3,355. Was it, do you, do you have, what was the increase from the previous, let's say Monday, or the previous Friday? We do had you? approximately 1,000 kids more this Monday than last week. Can you send us the breakdown by school? Yes, I have it here and I'll, and I'll pass it out to you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the superintendent's report is recognition of outstanding, outstanding service award for principals for the month of March. This will be done by Mr. Martin Munoz, assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. All of our uh, students or staff that will be recognized this evening are joining our meeting through Facebook Live, and so our directors or assistant superintendents will acknowledge their names. Thank you, Mr. Munoz. Good afternoon, Mr. Board President, Oscar Salinas, uh, Madam Superintendent, Dr. Science, members of the board, and uh, those uh, from the community that are joining us online and those of you that are here present. Uh, it is my honor today to recognize the Outstanding Service Award for Principals for the month of March. Uh, John C. Maxwell, author of the 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader says, leaders are effective because of who they are on the inside. One of the 21 qualities that he talks about in his book is generosity. He noted, true generosity isn't an occasional event. It comes from the heart and permeates every aspect of the leader's life, touching his time, money, talent, and possessions. Effective leaders, the kind that people want to follow, don't gather things just for themselves. They do it in order to give to others. Today we recognize Ms. Rosa E. Gonzalez, Principal at Zapata Elementary for her generosity to the school community. Ms. Gonzalez, together with her staff, hosted several successful events at Zapata Elementary where they gave back to students and their families. In December, the campus hosted a co-drive 
and over 500 coats were dis distributed to her students. In February, the campus staff distributed pizza, tacos, and boxes of food to the community during the, uh, the week of the winter storm. These are only a few of the events where Ms. Gonzalez has given back to her community. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, we would like to recognize uh, Ms. Rosa Gonzalez, principal at Zapata Elementary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Munoz. The next recognition is recognition of Texas Association of Future Educators, state and national qualifiers. Mr. Jorge Flores, our Director for Career and Technical Education, will present this recognition. Good afternoon, um, board president, members of the board, Dr. Science, community members. At this time, I'd like to recognize our students that participated in the Texas Association of Future Educators um, event. And uh, we also want to recognize our uh, teacher uh, in charge of them, Ms. Vanessa Brown, who was a, a supervisor of students and make sure that they were successful. I'd also like to thank the principal, Ms. Claudia Perez, for her support regarding these students. First, uh, we have Marisa Lamas, who is one of our seniors at that campus. She participated and qualified for state in the area of lesson planning and delivery with a focus in STEM. She also um, qualified for state in the area of chapter yearbook. Our students are also, uh, were advised to also be able to uh, view the session through Facebook Live, so they, they, they're online at this point. Maria Ortega, also one of our seniors. She also participated in the chapter yearbook. Susan, uh, Susan uh, Silva, one of our uh, 12th grade students, she participated in the Educators Rising Moment, Impromptu Lesson, and Ethical Dilemma. Erica Solis, one of our seniors, she uh, uh, qualified for in the area of Ethical Dilemma and also public speaking. Laura Chavez, one of our seniors, she also participated and qualified in the area of Ethical Dilemma, as well as Martin Vasquez, one of our seniors also qualified for in the area of ethical dilemma. Luis Aguilar, one of our juniors at that campus, Jimmy Carter, he um, participated in an interactive bulletin board and also in the project Visualize. Jocelyn Ivarra, one of our, our juniors as well, she also uh, worked with the children's literature and also project Visualize. Esmeralda Luna, one of our juniors, she participated in the children's literature and also the project Visualize as well as Valeria Lucio, which is one of our juniors that also participated and qualified in the area of children's literature and project Visualize. Our national qualifiers, we have uh, again Marisa Lamas, one of our seniors, with the lesson planning and delivery with the focus in STEM. We also have Suzanne Silva, which is one of our seniors, with the Educators Rising Moment, Impromptu Lesson, and Ethical Dilemma. Erica Solis, one of our seniors, Laura Chavez, another one of our seniors, and Martin Vasquez, one of our seniors there as well, they all also qualified in the area of ethical dilemma. Thank you, this includes the portion of the TAFI recognition. Thank you, Mr. Flores, congratulations to all our students. The next recognition is recognition of La Jolla Career and Technical Education Agriculture students. Thank you. Um, in this particular event, we'd also like to recognize our advisors. Our advisor for La Jolla High School is Ms. Joanna Gonzalez. We'd also like to thank our principal, Mr. Antonio Cano, for his support uh, with our program. And first, we'll be um, going down the, uh, the list with the names. And we have Leilani Gonzalez, who placed first with the lambs, fourth with the goats. She also uh, received a blue ribbon for the cutting board event. Michael Gonzalez, second place in lamb, seventh place in steer. Showmanship finalist, blue ribbon also for cutting board. We also have Luis Delgado with a reserve breed champion uh, for beef heifer, reserve grand champion for heifer, um, multiple awards. And um, we also have JD Delgado, or known as or JD, right, but Juan Diego Delgado. He also received a seventh place for heifers. Jade Garcia received a reserve breed champion lightweight ABC commercial heifer award and also fifth place for steer. Also received the blue ribbon for cutting board and was also a participant for the cover girl event. Jacqueline De Anda placed uh, multiple times 
seventh for uh, heifer, again for seventh for heifer, seventh place. Also fifth place for heifers and also received a blue ribbon for cutting boards. Kiana Kayleen Villarreal received sixth place for rabbits. Adrina Garza received third place for lambs and fourth place for goats. Ethan Zamora, fifth place for commercial heifer. Juanito Garcia, fourth place for heifer and again, fourth place for heifer. Ruben Araujo, first place for heifer, fourth place for heifer as well, and also a blue ribbon for cutting board. Casey Ibarra, fifth place for heifer, fourth place for heifer as well, and also a blue ribbon for a cutting board. Sebastian Gonzalez received seventh place for steer, and also a blue ribbon for cutting board. Abigail Cantu, fifth place for pigs, blue ribbon for cutting board as well. Uh, Aledis Cantu, fourth place for heifer, and a blue ribbon for cutting board as well. The following students received a blue ribbon for cutting board, and they are Kayla Rios, Roel Benavides, Jaciel Coronado, and Ray Longoria. These are our students for La Jolla High School that participated and received those awards. For Juarez Lincoln High School, I want to recognize the advisor, Mr. Ruben Canales, and also want to thank the principal, Mr. Ricardo Estrada, for his support in our events. Dareli Garza, she received a breed champion for hair cheap. Debony Garza received a reserve breed champion hair cheap. Noah Casas, uh, he received a first place for registered heifer and second place for market steer. He also received a second place for Charlie sale of champions. Joshua Casas uh, received a first place for the AOB registered market steer and also for a fourth place, uh, Kianina. And also want to thank Mr. Carlos Molina for his participation and working with the program there at Juarez Lincoln. We also have Palmview High School. We want to recognize Mr. Michael Requenes and Arolo Solis for their uh, excellent leadership with our students and also the principal, Ms. Uh, Ayala, for her support with our program. Isaiah Garza, he received a reserve division champion for commercial ABCs. Um, also have Carolina Peña, which received a reserve division champion for market goat. Samuel Ramirez for breed champion, Simbra steer division. Aulani uh, Garza, reserve champion for commercial ABC heifer. Dominic Requenes for reserve champion in ARB heifer as well. The following students work with our program and would also like to take the time to recognize them. Ryan Zamora, Nashla Rosales, Samantha Ramirez, Samantha Ortiz, Evalinet uh, Rodriguez, Mia Requenes, Christine Gonzalez, Oscar Gonzalez, Aileen Rios, Karime Gonzalez, Alexis Trejo, Alfonso Morín, Jaime Martinez, Jonas Martinez, Javier Martinez, Jose Herrera, Isaac Garza, Gustavo Garza, and Stephanie Garcia. I want to thank them for their participation and for working with our program at Palmview High School. This concludes our recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Flores, and congratulations to all our students, and thank you to all of the parents who support their students in these uh, competitions and events. The next is recognition of Jimmy Carter Early College High School as the 2020-2021 Conference 4A District 32 UIL Academic Meet Champions. We have Mr. Abel Zamora, our secondary UIL coordinator, that will give this recognition. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Dr. Science, board members, assistant superintendents, for your continued support of UIL academics. And a special thank you to our parents, students, and staff that are uh, following along via social media. Tonight, we recognize Jimmy Carter Early College High School as UIL academics district champions for District 32-4A. This is the first UIL academic district title in the history of Jimmy Carter. Students participated at district meet on March 25th through the 27th. The following students placed first, second, or third in their respective events and have advanced their regional meet on April 16th. Dominique Brown, uh, copy editing and headline writing. Mariana Castillo, number sense. Kayla De Leon, number sense. Daniela Flores, poetry. Marisa Llamas, feature writing, uh, number sense, and news writing. Leanne Lopez, Editorial Writing. Jesus Menchaca, Ready Writing and Spelling. Juliana Mendez, Prose. Karime Salinas, 
poetry. Adeline Vasquez, number sense and ready writing. And Michael Del Angel, qualified in five events. Copy editing, editorial, feature, headline, and news writing. Um, their coordinators are Claudia Camarillo and Ivan Silva, Principal Claudia Gomez Perez. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zamora. Congratulations to all our students from Jimmy Carter Early College High School. The next item is recognition of Palmview High School as the 2020-2021 Conference 5A District 30 UIL Academic Meet Champions. Palmview High School. Um, we, we will recognize Palmview High School as UIL Academic District Champions for District 35A. This is the first time um, you, Palmview High School has won the UIL Academic District title. Students participated at the district meet on March 26th and 27th. The following students will be competing at the regional meet on Saturday, April 17th. David Alfaro, informative speaking. Carissa Cortez, copy editing and social studies. Caleb Espinosa, social studies and spelling. Osmara Flores, spelling. Tiara Galvan, copy editing, headline, and news writing. Janalise Garcia, spelling. Emily Garza, spelling. Rolando Garza, calculator, math, and number sense. Eric Infante, calculator, math, and number sense. Lourdes Lopez, poetry. Yair Lopez, math, and number sense. Stephanie Moreno, calculator and copy editing. Joseph Reina, social studies. Mariela Silva, persuasive speaking. Ivan Valdez, number sense. Xavier Pina, uh, qualified in five events, calculator, headline writing, math, news writing, and science. Their coordinator is Mara Castillo, Principal Ivan Ayala. Thank you, Mr. Zamora. Congratulations to all our UIL students at Palmview High School, and thank you to all of their parents for the support they provide their children. The next recognition is recognition of powerlifting state champion. And we have Mr. Victor Garza, athletic director, that's going to present this recognition. Mr. President, um, Madam Superintendent, Board of Trustees, community, social media uh, audience, it gives me great pleasure to come before you and introduce a young man that represented La Jolla ISD, represented Lobo Nation with the proudest um, accomplishment that anybody can, can achieve. Unfortunately, last year, due to this pandemic, he was cut short because he would have been a back-to-back state champion. Today with us from Palmview High School Senior in, social, in um, Facebook Live, we have Senior Albert Vargas. He was awarded or he earned the distinguished honor of being State of Texas state champion, 220 pound power lifter. And we're extremely proud of him. The most amazing thing I wanna share real quick is he bench pressed 450 pounds which was 15 pounds less than his personal best. But he personal best on squat, 655 pounds. He deadlifts, which you get the bar and you come straight up, 610 pounds for a total of 1,715 pounds, which he put him way over 45 pounds over his next competitor. So in our audience, we have Mr. Albert Vargas. Albert is coached by Coach Renzo Tamez. Coach Renzo Tamez, I want to make sure we recognize him also because this is his fourth state champion at Palmview High School. And given, well, again, with the, the unfortunate circumstance where we find ourselves last year, he was projected to have between four and five state champions last year that, that ended up leaving us. But Coach Renzo Tamez has had two boys and two girls state champion from 216, 2017, 2018, 
and now Mr. Albert Vargas in 2021. So I want to um, publicly acknowledge and recognize from Palmview High School, Coach Renzo Tamez. On behalf of our staff, on behalf, uh, also we want to thank our principal, Ms. Ivana Ayala, and we want to thank our Board of Trustees, our administration, Madam Superintendent, for the support that has been bestowed upon our student athletes and continued support. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach Garza, and congratulations to Albert Vargas and his family. Next, we have recognition of La Jolla ISD nurses and district nurse who assist Hidalgo County Health Department to ensure administration of COVID-9 vaccines. Mr. Ricardo Villarreal, Assistant Superintendent for Operations and Student Services, will give this recognition. Thank you, Dr. Sines, and thank you, Board President, distinguished board members, and uh, all community members here, personally or virtually. Uh, I want to start by saying that La Jolla is the nursing department takes pride in prioritizing student safety, well-being, and as well as our community. Therefore, with that said, we would like to com congratulate and recognize the outstanding work of our student services department with their nurses included that have made on a weekly and daily basis for the efforts in assisting Hidalgo County Department in hosting the COVID-19 vaccination clinics in our community. La Jolla ISD nurses have assisted in the vaccination of over 10,000 community members to help mitigate the spread of COVID-19 in our area, along with several other departments to include our police department. We would like to recognize the following nurses for their efforts. Our nurses include Kayla Garcia from La Jolla High School, Sharon Torres from Palmview High School, Sylvia Taylor from Juarez Lincoln High School, Marta Lizondo from Chapa Elementary, Myra Carrales from Clinton Elementary, Christine Carter from Memorial Middle School, Lina Garcia from Academy, Academy of Health Science, Vanessa Vela from Flores Elementary, Rosemary Mesa from Escandon Elementary, San Juanita Gomez from Gonzalez Elementary, Lupita Mora from Domingo Trevino Middle School, San Juanita Esquivel from Chavez Middle School, Umbelina Cantu from Sanford Dice Elementary, Magdalena Perez from Peña Elementary, Ashley Gamboa from Garza Elementary, Belen Vialon from E.B. Reina Elementary, Sandra Rosales, Mendiola Elementary, Corina Skidmore from Ann Richards Middle School, Dora Reina from Perez Elementary, Marina Mena from Benson Elementary, Delia Ochoa from Diaz Villarreal Elementary, Amy Lee, she's our district sub nurse, she was also involved, Raymond Campazana from JFK Elementary, Miriam Salinas from Zavala Middle School, Lisa Garza from Irene Garcia Middle School, and of course our district nurse coordinator, Ms. Marisa Morales. And we'd like to thank them and we'd like to take the time right now to thank the board for allowing us to, to go ahead and work together with our community and of course our superintendent of schools. So thank you very much, We're humbly blessed excuse, and appreciated. Excuse me, Mr. Villarreal, we left out Yvette Alaniz from Camarena Elementary. Excuse me on that one there, Ms. Yvette Alaniz from Camarena Elementary as well. So we want to thank the board and our superintendent of schools for allowing us to work together with the community to, to mitigate this COVID as we go through it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Villarreal. That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Doc. Up next be discussion items. First item be the discussion of investment, uh, investment earnings as of February 28th. Mr. Jaime Lopez, Executive Director for Budget and Finance, will lead this discussion. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'll direct you to page 41 of your binder. Okay, so this is pretty much a snapshot of our investments as of February 28, 2021. Um, as you can see at the bottom, we have a total of $116.4 million, with the bulk of those uh, $116 million composed of three components. The general fund at about, pardon, 40, page 42, sorry. Um, the a bulk of the, the, the investments are in um, the general fund, which is 83.3%, 3% in the workman's comp, 
at $3.5 million and 3.25% um, at the tax maintenance bond well, with almost $3.8 million. And the rest of the components are, are very immaterial and that they, they total up to 100%. So that, that pretty much makes up the $116.4 million. Thank you. Questions, concerns? Thank you. Lopez. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Lopez. Up next, be item number two, uh, discussion of student attendance accountability coordinator responsibilities. This discussion will be led by Dr. Adriana Villarreal, Executive Director for Student Attendance and Community Relations. Good afternoon, board president, board members, community members, Dr. Science. Um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and give a description of um, some of the responsibilities and assignments um, of our attendance coordinators. So what is it that they do? What are some of the strategies that they use to help students increase attendance at each of the schools? One of the first things that they do is they analyze student attendance reports. This is done daily. And why would they do this? They analyze trends in student absences. They visit, they visit with administrators, attendance clerks, and they, so that they can identify students that have uh, excessive absences. Um, and so they make recommendations as well. What are some of these students needed? Um, they assist the campuses by conferencing with students and parents. They also conduct home visits. They also call parents and they assist in making decisions on warning letters um, in order to file truancy charges on students who have excessive absences. Uh, they also assist in collecting documentation needed to submit to TEA attendance waivers. So you might ask yourself, uh, how is this assisting the campuses? But indirectly, by filing these waivers, they are assisting campuses with attendance. So some of the other strategies, what other things do they do? They meet with computer services department frequently. This is almost done on a daily basis. Uh, they look over uh, computer reports. They try to analyze why some campuses are having um, uh, some difficulty in posting of attendance. They have also created, they have worked in creating videos for our teachers. When all of this pandemic hit us, we went from being, uh, from taking attendance the normal way, now all of a sudden everything changed. So we became partners, very close partners, with the uh, computer services department, um, and so we had to guide each other on following the TEA guidelines. Uh, TEA guidelines kept changing, and kept changing, so we needed to make sure that we were following TEA guidelines. Um, they also meet with attendance clerks daily, almost daily, um, to ensure posting of attendance is done accurately. Um, and if there's any errors that are being made at the campuses, one of the things that they do is they assist the campuses in correcting those errors. Um, they also, one of their other assignments that uh, was given to them this school year um, organize and present, they also organize and, and present campus attendance reports and they do presentations at the campuses with teachers um, during a staff meeting. They review each school campus's um, campus improvement plan uh, to verify that each campus has included in their um, uh, campus improvement plan that they've included their attendance plan activities and incentives that they are providing at the campus. And their assignments continue. What else do they do? They identify schools with low attendance. Um, and they use the different types of reports, of course. And they, um, 
try and identify which, what are some of the reasons for the low attendance. It could be that maybe teachers forgot to post attendance, so they go out there and they talk to attendance clerks, they go out there and they talk to the principal to address the situation. Um, they make daily visits and calls to attendance clerks um, to assist in the monitoring of the student attendance and provide feedback. They also remind attendance clerks to make sure teachers post attendance every day. Um, post attendance, they also post attendance for campuses when an attendance clerk, and we've had several situations like this, when an attendance clerk is out sick, has resigned, or is out on FMLA. Well, then the campus needs someone to post attendance. So then that's when our attendance clerks actually go, I mean, I'm sorry, our attendance coordinators, they go to the campuses and they actually sit there and do the attendance for the campus. Um, they are also in charge of training newly hired attendance clerks who come in and really don't have any training. So they kind of go in there and give them an overview and guide them through the process. So our goal in the school district is to make sure that, um, so what is our attendance goals as a district? Well, one of our goals is we need to increase the average daily attendance in all schools. That's the main reason that we're all here. So our district goal is 95%. So we're always working toward that goal, 95%. And so uh, that's for the district, but each level has a different goal. Elementary, secondary, they have a 97.5. That's the goal that they're always trying to achieve. High schools, 95%. Early college high schools, 98%. La Jolla West Academy and Hope, they're at 90%. And Head Start is at 92%. So this information was extracted from, I mean, let me look at my copy, this is very, very light. What we have here is, this is for the district. This is the district-wide attendance incentive plan that was created since last school year, and this is what we follow. All campuses are given this attendance plan. This is a district attendance plan. However, each campus has their own incentive plan as well. One of the things that I just wanted to point out on this one, because this is more like for the campus principals, um, as a district, what we do is um, whenever a campus meets at the end of the six weeks, they have an average of 97.5 and they're an elementary campus. They receive from the district uh, $1 for every student that's enrolled at their school. So for example, if a school has 500 students, they receive $500. And that money is used for in, to continue buying incentives, to continue motivating the students uh, to, uh, to achieve perfect attendance. Okay, so cumulative RA. Some of these terms we had never used before until the pandemic. Uh, remote asynchronous is what the teachers at the campuses have to post. It's called remote asynchronous. And what that means is this is they're counting the present for the students that are at home. And there's a, there's a long list of, of, um, of guidelines that go with this from TEA that I don't want to go into. But what I do want to share with you is um, where we were at first six weeks. If you look at the chart that's there, first six weeks, we were at 95.61. Remember that the attendance uh, rate for the goal for the school district is 95%. We met the goal first six weeks. Second six weeks, we were at 95.46. We met the goal again. Third six weeks, we were at 94.9. We missed it by a smidge. And at fourth six weeks, 95.06 is where we were at. So basically we met the goal for the district first, second, and fourth six weeks. And the information that's listed underneath, it's just the same information, just in a different graph. So what is it that we do with, with campuses? At every principal's meeting, what we do is we show them this. I present at every principal's meeting, and um, we show them this report. 
The report that I'm showing you now is the report for the fourth six weeks cumulative. But we do have one for every single week. And what we do is we go ahead and um, highlight, highlight in green the campuses that met the goal for that particular week. If they're in green, that means they met the goal. Okay? So I'm showing you the La Jolla High School right now. This is the fourth six weeks cumulative ADA. Oh my God, I moved them around. Okay. So then middle schools, in middle schools, if you'll see, we had for the fourth six weeks, one school that met the goal. And we're continuing to work with those students and those campuses that, have, that are not meeting the goal. Um, working on different um, strategies. And in the elementary, if you'll see, elementary, we have all of these campuses uh, in green that met the goal. But if you'll see that in yellow, we kind of highlight them in yellow as well because we kind of want to uh, motivate them to continue trying. If they were close to meeting the goal, they are highlighted in yellow. One of the things that I want to emphasize is that both of my coordinators are given assignments and uh, they are both held accountable for the assignments that I give them. We meet regularly and we talk about their assignments, we talk about the schools that they visited, and so we have all these conversations. And the list of assignments per school um, that are given to each of them changes throughout because if we notice that there's several schools that are significantly falling behind, then I have to shift my plan of action and I have to say, okay, we're not going to have we're not gonna have someone monitoring a school that's continuously at 98%. We don't need to. They're handling it on their own. And so then we reshift our attention and I go ahead and send them to the schools that need our assistance. Uh, today I had a, a lot of visits. Um, the coordinators made a lot of visits to a lot of campuses today. Um, just talking to principals, uh, finding out what is going on, why is your school this low, what are you doing, talking about incentive plans. So all of those things are going on. And just like Dr. Sines holds me accountable for the job that's being done here, I hold them accountable for the job that I give them as well. So um, are there any questions? What has been the, the, what has been the, the, the difference, Dr. Sines, from the creation of this department, the difference in the growth of the attendance rate? Well, this department, uh, we began working last year, and last year we had really good results with our uh, attendance. And this year, in spite of the fact that we have had a lot of different ways to record attendance, we have been able to meet the goals. And so I think because of the daily attention that these coordinators give to the campuses, uh, meeting with attendance clerks, going to, with attendance clerk to correct errors because teachers have had to learn different ways this year of um, recording attendance. The fact that we do have these staff members has allowed us to meet our goals. And I have to mention just one thing that um, we are there as um, a support to them and we help them as much as we can, but I gotta hand it over to the campuses. Mm -hmm. Campus principals, teachers, everyone has tried so hard uh, we're just there to guide them and to help them and to support them. But they're the ones that are doing the hard work. And so, yes, uh, the, what Dr. Science mentioned is true. It, the, the posting of attendance changed just this school year three times. Students that are at home, are re the attendance is posted one way. Students that are in school, I had to create a, uh, an attendance, a paper attendance roster to do that and uh, guided by TEA, of course. And so, it's, it's just real different. And now that the students are coming back, that's something different as well. So yes, our teachers have gone through so much. So I gotta hand it over to the campus administrations and the, especially the teachers. They're the ones that are right there in the front lines having to, to make the changes constantly with these students. So we're just guiding them and supporting them. Uh, it would be good if we could chart, uh, just uh, be charting. That way we can be looking at data looking at data and charting um, a comparison, you know, every, um, every month or I don't know, every uh, six weeks, um, just to see the, the difference from 
when not having the department and having the department, that's one. And then number two, Dr. Sainz, if we could have uh, this uh, report, like maybe every second board meeting of every month, to have a, a, a report of how the campuses are doing, how, which are the ones that are meeting, and which are the ones that are not meeting, um, so that we can see uh, the difference and the impact that the, that the group is making or that the new department is making. Mm -hmm. For me, thank, I'd like yes, to, it's you, not Dr. a question, but I would like to thank your department for do, doing an outstanding job. I'm looking here at the numbers. And with the pandemic and everything, the uncertainty of it, man, you all, the first six weeks, you all hit the market 95.6. And that, you know, that speaks volumes of your department. And I just want to thank you for everything that you all doing, especially because you all are the, also in the front line, you know, going out to school, to houses and all that stuff. And it takes a lot. But thank you all for, and your department for doing an outstanding job. Thank you, Mr. Cantu. Um, Dr. Benavides, you're right. Um, in the comparison, what you're saying, that now that the department exists, I just finished having a conversation with someone today. And we were talking about how everything unfolded as about at about this time last year, that's when everything just, everything was shut down. And the way the district responded was amazing, amazing. We had no guidance. TEA had not put out anything out there. And so I was talking about how, how could we have done if this attendance department did not exist? So, I mean, we took control of the situation. I am in contact. I have my contacts at TEA that are guiding me along the way because I don't just do it just to do it but I'm receiving the guidance from them. And so, um, I mean, the way the, the school district functioned, the way the school di district functioned, that immediately went into, you know, action mode. You know, we're gonna do instructional packets. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And so we didn't know about remote instruction at the time. It wasn't until later in the summer that TEA set out all of those guidelines. And we, but the way that we were able to manage and come together as a district, was amazing. And another thing that I had mentioned, I'm like, I don't care. Like some people say, you know, I've been a principal for X amount of years. It doesn't matter. Everyone was year one this year because it was very different. This year, if you have not experienced working as a teacher or a principal in a pandemic, mm -hmm. then don't say that you've been around 100 years because that experience was null and void compared to what you had to learn along the way with all of this. So I just, I just wanna hand it over to the district because everybody got together and did this. And so our department all of a sudden became super, super important. So kudos to Dr. Science for thinking of the idea that this was needed before that pandemic even hit. And so we have been taking the reins and, and making it work. And yes, we can do a comparison, but you can't compare one thing to another because it's, it's it, this is like, you can't compare what we've gone through as a school district and everyone that has worked so hard, you can't compare it to any other year. We were doing amazing last year and we were like, yes, we're on a roll. Then all of a sudden this hits and we're like, what do we do now? And so it, it was very difficult. It was a very difficult year, but we have managed to go with the flow, to do what we need to do. And so we're here now and hopefully we're seeing the end of the pandemic now. But we can get you all that information that you're requesting, Dr. Benavides. Thank you, Dr. Riarreal. And uh, I echo the sentiments. A very special thank you to the teachers, because they're the ones yes. in the front line yes, they, they're having the ones. to make adjustments. And um, thank goodness that TEA allowed us different ways to count students present so that we could meet the goal. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Riarreal, I also want to extend my gratitude to you and to your coordinators and to your entire student services department. I know that I've been present at some of the initiatives or some of the events that you have spearheaded or your department has spearheaded. So I, I see how that takes a lot of time and planning and the effort that, that, that you're putting into it and your staff. And so I extend my gratitude to you and all of them. And especially like you mentioned, it is a team effort and that you're able to support our campuses is probably the most important part. And I also want to extend my gratitude to the principals and attendance clerks and especially also the teachers who are helping us with this because I know I, as a parent, I'm also, I receive those calls and I know it takes time and, and you know, they're all doing it. So it the takes a team and, yes, and yeah. working together. I know none of us prepared for, like you said, this year and uh, just praise and kudos to all your, your staff and your coordinators. And like I said, all our, our campuses for, for this team effort. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Dr. Villarreal. Thank you, Dr. Villarreal. Thank you all. Okay, moving on next, uh, the consent agenda. Dr. Science, you have some items that yes, were... Yes, Mr. Salinas. Uh, administration is needing to pull out item uh, B1 due to some information uh, that has just become available to us, so we will bring that item back at our next meeting. Okay. And then also, I've had a request to put to pull items number three in bids, uh, number seven, eight, and nine out of consent agenda. Do we have representatives from each of those areas so that they can answer the questions that are gonna be? Yes, uh, Ms. Okay. Sylvia Zapata is here to respond to questions. To so all those four? Yes. Okay, so then I can have a, a motion for the, the rest of the consent. So moved. So moved. To approve. I have a motion. Second. Can I, can I take that other as a second? Yes, okay, sir. all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. So we come back to letter B, one we're postponing. Item number three, approval of the Insect Extermination Services CSP, uh, number 2021-37. Questions? I have a question on that. Where is uh, Ms. Zapata? I think uh, Ms. Zapata is coming yes, from, from the back. Sylvia, so, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ms. Zapata. Welcome, Ms. Zapata. Good evening. We're on number three under bits. Mrs. Hernandez had a question. I just basically want to know how we grade this because uh, I saw that the, the one that is being recommended is actually the highest one. So pretty much can you just tell us uh, briefly how we go and, and, and how you recommend that? Yes. Um, so in uh, February of 2020, our school board approved various evaluation matrices. Mm -hmm. And depending on the goods and services, the type of goods and services, as well as the funding, um, that determines which evaluation matrix we will use. For this particular solicitation, we used the evaluation matrix specifically for federally funded procurement because this, um, these services are funded with local funds as well as federal funds. The Child Nutrition Program funds their portion of these services. And so we have an evaluation committee, and so the Purchasing Department Administration um, uses this tool, and we guide that committee in evaluating the criteria that is set out in this specific matrix. So by state law, we shall take into consideration various criteria, not price alone. In, additionally, when, federally, when federal funds are being used, there's um, specific criteria that has to be taken into consideration. I'm not sure if I can turn on the camera here, but if I can turn it on, I can, um, I'd be able to show the evaluation matrix. Can someone help me? Thank you. So we have a set of 12 criteria in this evaluation matrix that's taken into consideration, which the committee took into account. Purchase price being one, the reputation of the vendor and the vendor's goods and services, the quality, the extent to which they meet our needs, the vendor's relationship with the district, um, if the vendor's a hub, uh, the total long term cost to the district, environmentally sensitive delivery requirements, district community involvement, whether there's any litigation with these vendors and any other factor that we uh, listed specifically in the solicitation. 
So these are the factors, then the three bidders are listed, and then um, each one is given points in accordance to the information that was provided. So we make our solicitation documents available to all participating vendors, and when they submit their proposals, they provide their pricing in addition to um, other information that they upload in what we call response attachments. And so we provide the evaluators with that information, and that's what they take into consideration when they evaluate submits. I have a question, Ms. Zapata. Like, yes, for example, I, I, I don't have that page, but I know that in some, pretty much what we're doing is rating people, and that's the way we select, not by the amount they're charging, because for me, okay. if, I mean, I'm here so to- So price is one criterion, Mr. Gantu. You okay. are absolutely correct. Um, so the cost is, um, calculated and all evaluators will have the same points assigned to each vendor for cost because that is automatically calculated based on our formula. So uh, the purchase price criterion is weighted at 35 points. And these are the points that our school board of trustees approved back in February of 2020. So. We use our formula, and so the vendor providing the best value, or the lowest cost, I should say, the vendor providing the lowest cost would get the 35 points. The next vendor came in at 32.05, and then the third vendor at 25.55. So that one is a quantified calculation. The rest of the points, are based on information submitted, references sought, district's experience, community involvement, et cetera. I just, for me, it's just, you know, we're trying, right now we're living through a pandemic and we're trying to save as much money as we can. And the way, I understand we rate and it's part of, the, of the, what we approved as a board. But for example, uh, relations with the districts, I'm all about giving everybody a fair chance. And I feel that in that, Category, we're not giving them the, the proper rating because they don't. Some vendors don't have any relationships with us because they've never done business with the district. So right there, they you know they're already uh, scored lower. And yes, they score zero. The way I see it is, well, I think we really do need to consider the pricing mostly because well, see, we're trying to save some money right here. We're going actually with the highest. And I understand the categories. I mean, I do, but. But maybe we can later look into something else so that we can, uh, you know, okay. justify uh, going with the high. There were some adjustments when we brought our evaluation matrices before the board, and so there were adjustments. So, for so example, we could, we could probably bring that back, the evaluation yes, to adjust criteria, the, back to adjust the, board the ratings, for the consideration. points. That's what I'm going to ask legal because this is something. I mean, th this is your level of expertise, Ms. This is your department, and we always admire everything that you do. So this is something that was approved by the board in February of 2020. So you're just following whatever we approved, and it's already here. So the question to legal would be is, um, we've been given the information, so we're opening up for a vote here, unless the, unless the, the motion is going to be to postpone or bring it back. But I have to open it up for a motion, correct? The board can oh. reject the vision if it's so true. But even though it was under... I guess approval of us. Basically, we approved. You approved yeah. So everything that she's done and everything that's here is is correct. It's just the only thing that now we bring it back. So I can go under this number and just bring a vote, right? Okay. Coach. Oh. Yeah. Coach. Excuse me. No. Just real quickly. The only thing we're saying is, yeah, we understand it was done correct. I mean, yeah. we see that, and we know we approved that. What we're just saying is, and we're questioning because we are going with the most expensive one. So we didn't get that form. So we, I mean, all we have is this here. So if yeah, we had seen that one, we could see how it is that they scored or how it is that the district scored them. But I mean, in addition to that form that I'd like to have in the future um, would be like, I don't know, I don't know what we're getting or do we have a picture? I, I think, well, do we have a picture of what we're purchasing or? 
I mean, we're purchasing 305 of them. I'm just wondering. But okay. we would have to bring it. We would have to bring it. We would have to. We would have to either vote on this and then bring it back and change any, the instrument that she's using. Am I correct? correct? That 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 would be what we can do. So I would have to open it up for a motion for those that want to approve it, and or for those that want to bring it back and do some changes. So, so. I, I move that we approve what the administration recommended and use bug off pest control for McAllen, Texas. Okay, so I'll take a vote here. I'll have a motion by Dr. Benavides. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All those in favor, you came by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, the next one, um, I think you're going to stay there, Miss. P number seven. Is it also you, Dr. I mean, Mrs. Zapata? Ms. Zapata, before we move to yes, the next Mr. one, Mr. just my question is we just to have a little bit more clarification because for people, you know, yeah. we, 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 have, we, we have the duty to respond to our, 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 our community. Sense. That's and nice. we just need to know how we can justify and say, okay, this is the rating, and more or less, I mean, you know what I mean? So at least just to have a little bit of understanding is, is my, my point. And the board did a really good job because the board um, chose to give the most points to the pricing. So they really, I commend you all back in February for doing that because you gave the points based on the pricing. So they were able to get the most points there. Uh, and the ones that the one that you were discussing is just two points, so it's not like they're going to lose a lot if they don't have a relationship with the district. No, but some sometimes it, the points is very close. That two points may make a difference. Yeah, Someone CPL, who's never worked with a district gets South a zero. Texas, it's yeah. a little unfair. South Texas and CPL at the end rated 85 and 85.05. Those two yeah. points make a big difference. Yeah, if it had been between those two, two points would have made a difference. So, so then the only other thing would be is to bring this instrument back yeah, to the board, yeah. and that well, that way that's we. I mean, easy. I think that's the fairest thing we can do. Yeah. That's what I was just telling Dr. Schein, so that's well, okay. Mm -hmm. I know that we work so really hard we, in this rubric. Yeah. Go ahead. I know we work really hard in this rubric, and I know about the fairness and unfairness because we had a, a, even a work session on this rubric, too. But we also know things that have transpired throughout the district, as they say in Spanish, lo barato a veces sale caro. And so we go based on quality, too. So Definitely. based on Ms. Zapata and her expertise, whoever was on the committee, I mean, your department has earned so many awards, and many of us that know you have 100% trust in you that whatever you bring to us is the very best for our district. I mean, we trust you and your, de your department, so. Um, yeah, I mean, no, no, there's no doubt about that. We're just and saying, so with you know, the for rubric, clarification I mean, for us. That's I mean, all, we worked that's all really we're hard with about. this rubric. We went back and forth. So. Yes, no, 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 and, and, and no and question right. about it. We, we, we thank you, Ms. Zapata, thank for, you. for what you're bringing to us. It's just what we're saying is just it's very close, and it's a, about a $12,000 difference. That's yes. all we were questioning. Thank and, you. Thank and, you. Thank you. And maybe, you know, middle, it can be negotiated, middle. you know, and a lot of yeah. times. Yeah. But that's all I'm saying. But, but, but if we can do that, guys, and like I told other well, signs, we can bring the instrument well, back, all of us will be able to see it, and then... We'll have a similar situation. Okay, so next one, be number seven is the approval of the construction services job order contract CSP 2018-37 renewal. I don't know. Somebody had a question. Okay, on item seven, eight, and nine, Ms. Zapata. We're please. doing them together, Ms. Hernandez. I'm sorry. Are we going to do them together? Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're taking seven, eight, and nine, guys, for the record. Thank you. Again, real briefly, I know that it stays that we do for the first two years, and then we can be extending towards the year. Do we go back and actually uh, check all the credentials and everything? Okay, so we go back and we um, create a new agreement with these vendors and then at the time, not all vendors are used. As they are used, we make sure that these vendors are compliant with their certificate of insurance or their payment and performance bonds that if the expenditure will exceed $50,000 individually that it's brought to the board for approval. So we check all that. So, but it's based, I mean, we do that when they get a job. We don't do it before. Like before we, we do we initially, actually... we do initially when okay. the vendors submit their, uh, their proposal documentation 
And then when a vendor is called upon to do a job and a requisition is being processed, we check to make sure that their certificate of insurance is current. And if the job requires a payment bond or a payment and performance bond, that those are secured. We will not approve POs without uh, that documentation. And if the expenditure exceeds $50,000, then we bring that specific expenditure before the board for individual action again. Okay, so in other words, like the first one, the number seven, uh, that was uh, actually done in March 2018. Okay, we already had it for three years. So we can still go in and approve another two years? Yes, okay, so I prepared a timeline for Dr. Science that we can, um, at a glance, see the timeline. So in, um, in, on March 28th of 2018, we brought that item before our school board and we told our board the base term, and we're following the terms as defined in the state. There's very specific language in there as far as the term and the renewals that are allowed. So um, we, we base our timeline as defined in the code. And so we came on March 28th, 2018, we told the board that the base term would be two years. And then after, those, after that second year, we would come and ask the board for, a, for three one-year extensions annually. So if you look at the chart that I prepared for Dr. Science, it shows 2018-37. Mm -hmm. We came before the board March 28th. We explained to the board the two-year base term with three additional one-year terms. Then we came back last year on February 26th, which, which was at, at the end of the initial two base term. At that time, we told the board that this was the first of three annual renewals, and the board approved. Now, on April 14th, we're bringing the second of three annual renewals for approval. And so the next year, on March 22nd, we'll bring the third of three. And so then, um, if you look at 2019-02, it, it kind of mirrors the same timeline other than the initial date because we processed them as supplemental solicitation. So we want them all to end on the same date because they all use the same industry, RS means uh, price index for pricing purposes. And so we don't wanna be using different industry um, price, uh, a, a, a different price index uh, per solicitation because that will really complicate pricing for our facilities department. So that's how you then see 2019-02. Again, it ran through um, uh, March 31st of 2020. Then we came in February 26, and we asked the board to um, approve the first of three annual renewals. And then tonight, we're asking the board to approve the second one. So then, um, when administration has the need to supplement the vendor base and we are approached to process a supplemental bid, we do that. And so we've done that for um, the facilities department. And so on the 2021-30, you see how um, in the rationale, we're asking the board to approve it through March 31st, 2022 and with one additional year term extension. So the next year, we're gonna come and ask the board to approve the final year for all three. And so this way, they all end on March 31st of 2023, and we have uniformity with a contract end date. The reason why I'm asking all of this, uh, Zapata, is that we get calls, and actually, and I know that we post, you know, whenever we're gonna take bids, but a lot of people don't know how to go about it, okay? And, you know, we do get the questions like, well, how often? Uh, and why, you know, the same companies? Uh, why, how can we go in? You know, they've been telling me just to wait. So this, this is why I felt that we needed to go out and, and explain to the community how it's actually okay. worked. I do appreciate your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you. And like, like I said, it's, 
It's just so that the community is aware of how we're working with it. Thank you. And, and Ms. Hernandez, uh, uh, to follow up on your statement, um, we promote uh, competition. And so we have any bidding system in place that we've been using since 2014. And we have staff available to guide any vendors that need assistance with the vendor registration and bidding process. So uh, once a vendor registers in our e-bidding system and they select the commodities that they're able to provide, once we issue the bid, they will automatically receive an invitation. So by all means, let those um, vendors know that we're available to guide them through the process. It's very user friendly. And if they have any questions, we're available to answer those as well. And Ms. Zapata, Thank do you, you so still much. use, do you still have the, the training? You have training for them, right? Yes, uh, Dr. Benavides. In fact, we're planning one for the beginning of May. Okay. We'll have a Zoom training this time due to the pandemic. And you usually advertise in the progress times. Is we do. Correct? We have advertised in the progress times and in the monitor as well. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Zapata. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And as for request of Ms. Hernandez, we brought in seven, eight, and nine for approval, guys. So I'll need a motion for those three under bids. So move. I have a motion, and I'll take the other one as a second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, motion passes. Under letter C, business and finance, number three, approval of application for payment of engineering fees, number one, for La Jolla ISD, E.B. Reina, Guillermo Flores, Leo J. Leo Elementary School, Sanitary Sewer. Uh, so move for sure. three and four. Three and four? Yes, sir. I have a motion for Mr. Garza. Second. And a second, those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter C, uh, business and finance number five, approval of application of contractor's payment request number 24 for La Jolla ISD job order contract with performance services incorporated elementary school tracks and school security aids. So move. I have a motion. Second. Second. And a second, all those in favor again, pass aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Next up, number six, approval of the application of contractor's payment request number 27 for La Jolla ISD phase two of the PSI Guaranteed Energy Savings Performance Contract Amendment Project. So moved. I have a motion. Second. Second. And I have a second. All those in favor, Nikim Basay and I? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Number seven, approval of payment for the consultant Mr. Board President, fee. if I may, sir, can we uh, move seven yeah. and eight? until after closed session, so Mr. Demarath could give uh, the board an update on the Hurricane Hannah claims. Okay, so you wanna seven and eight after executive? If, if the board doesn't mind. Okay, is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm putting out seven and eight uh, as per legal. Going down to number nine, requesting authorization to donate a uh, portable building to the city of Palmview. So move for items nine to 12. I'm sorry? I make a motion to approve items nine to 12. Items 9 to 12, uh, action motion, Mr. Garza, all those in favor? Aye. Do I have a second, guys, first? Second. Oh, second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter D, instruction of student services, number three, approval of the addendum of 2021 ACE Summer School. So have a motion? Second. And a second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter D, instruction of student services, number four, approval of the additional 2021 summer curriculum and instruction projects. So moved. So move. I have second. a motion. I'll second. And a second. All those in favor, Dekane Basay and I? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Under letter D, number five, Texas, uh, Texas 21 Century Community Learning Center Cycle 10, Year 4, Grand Ace Operations and Staff Working Days Calendar. So moved. I so moved. Oh, not to okay. approve. I'm sorry? I so move not to approve. You're on five and six, am I here? I can't, I can't oh, hear Oh, I'm on number six. No, Wait, number we're five. five. We're number, we're five. number five. Okay. But do you want to do five and six? No. Okay, so then I'll take her, I'll take her as her second. All those in care, but saying aye? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion passes. Under letter D, instruction in student services, uh, number six, discussion and approval of La Jolla's determination to remote learning for the individual students. I so move not to approve for the reason that I feel that there's very there's different dynamics that are taking place for this pandemic, and at the end, even though we do have some struggling students, I feel that at the end, our students need to have a choice. Uh, our parents need to have that choice for, for our students, and need be, we go to them, so they still have that option of remote learning. And um, different times, different needs. Because the way I read this, yeah. It's, it's not really giving them a choice. You're not giving them an option. Could you explain this to us? Is that yeah. what it is? Yes. This right here is a, um, 
It's a um, TEA, I guess, allowance you could call call it that any time that a student is having issues with attendance or not performing well because they are learning virtually and the school or the teacher determined that it would be in the student's best learning interest to be on campus, that we can tell the student, of course, after meeting with a parent, uh, that the virtual opportunity is not an option for them. But of course, it has to be that a student already has um, meets, let me see how many of these, um, one or more of the criteria, the student already has a 60 or below in one or more classes. Uh, they have lack, lack of progress if they're a pre-K through second grade student. They have three or more unexcused absences in a grading period, or we added if a student is uh, at West Academy or College and Career Center, which is our students that we're preparing for graduation. So they have to meet uh, one or more of those criteria. I and just don't like that the so parents that we don't can... have a choice. Pardon me? I just don't like the idea that the parents don't have a choice. Yes, and it is after uh, having a meeting with a parent um, where the parent would be advised also, the parent does have an opportunity to appeal due to uh, a medical condition. What happens if the parent doesn't agree? I was going to say that at the end of yeah. the day, the parent has the last word, mm -hmm. and the parent and if is he doesn't the parent. Agree, yeah, and this is, is not there, saying is there that. A, won't have, mm -hmm. in the would there be a penalty doc from TA? Or, yeah. I mean, no, no, there's no, no, no penalty. Uh, I know we didn't second for the discussion to occur, so I'm going to second SB. Uh, so that we can continue the discussion. But I think that we're um, shooting ourselves in the foot if we don't allow the kids the opportunity because it's good on one hand, but on the other hand, you can't force them to come. You're not, we're not gonna be able to do that okay. because at the end of the day, the parent is the parent. And if the parent says, my child is not gonna go, he's gonna continue, you know, we may need to strengthen um, the consequences if they don't enroll virtually, but they need to have that choice. Because what if we say we approve this and then they don't bring them? Especially the fact that right now there's a lot of people that haven't had the opportunity, have been afforded the opportunity to be vaccinated. Uh, I, I don't see how we could you know, pressure and bring them into school without that. So I agree. Okay, so, so then you're, you, you went ahead and second that, Dr. Yes, I wanted to second SP's motion so that we can continue the discussion and I think we're ready to vote. Okay, so then I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, again by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. Moving on still under, actually under E. Uh, human resources, public hearing uh, regarding payment in excess uh, contractual amount for executive directors. At this moment. I'm sorry, what? Sorry. I was gonna go into a hearing, go ahead. I'm gonna move that we postpone this item. Dr. Sines, that you bring it back on April the 28th at our next uh, meeting only because we don't want to leave anybody else out that is helping uh, in this department. Okay, so I have a motion by Dr. Benavides. Dr. Sainz, I have a question. Yeah. On these departments, I know we dissolved a couple of assistant superintendents. Did these people get the load? Uh, I know we're shorthanded right now. Yes, uh, these, are, these are the two staff members that are assisting with uh, the duties that would normally be done by the Assistant Superintendent for Administration and Finance and Student Services. And these are the two individuals that are taking those specific duties that I give the extra assignments to. As of now, I'm not giving extra assignments to any other staffs in their departments. These two individuals are the ones that are doing the duties that I would normally assign to the Assistant Superintendent heading these two departments. But there's other people in the departments that are helping these people to get the job done. So, there's, so other de there's other staff in the departments that are doing their regular work that they would normally be doing, but these two executive directors are the ones that are doing the task for the assistant superintendent. I, so this I is like for... Say, I would like so, to say that, that for me, if they're doing the, the, the extra duties, I'm, all, I'm okay with it, and if there's somebody else, we can bring it back on the next meeting for somebody else if everybody's doing it. But I'm okay with 
if they get the duties to give them the, the stipend they deserve. Oh. These, these oh. are the two, just so I understand, these are the two taking over the assistant superintendent for finance and for And HR. for student service. Oh, I mean, okay. I'll, excuse oh. me, HR. For human yes, I, I misspoke earlier, yes. Correct, right? It's no, administration You're saying Dr. B to bring it back. human resources. Huh? Yeah. You're, you're saying to bring it back. What, what Dr. Benavides, if, if TV station can maybe raise some of the mics, I know that. No, we're we're, we're saying to bring it back, including these two and to any generate to generate a list of other people, people that, that are that, helping. So basically, yes. it's to cover more people. Exactly. That, that's how the, the first motion yes. reads. Okay. So, how, however, I do want to say that these are the two individuals that I am assigning the duties of the assistant superintendent. Now, sometimes you know, other staff member are doing their regular work, whatever assignments they usually get. But these are the two people that are doing the duties of that assistant superintendent. I'm okay with well, voting I, for everyone. I also now. support administration's decision. And if there is, a, there are other individuals that we need to look at as well, I mean, we look at them okay. too. So, so I'm let, okay let me go with voting right now on, on this item. Okay, but I have a motion. Do I have a second uh, for Dr. Benavides? I'll, I'll second that. I'll second. With the, that it comes back to the next board meeting because that they need with, to with be that, with what that they did. need to get stipends. People need to get stipends, but which, it needs which to is be not a problem. Back. But it's just to generate the the rest of the employees that, that need. So that. we're approving these, but we're bringing or what are we? Mm. What are you seconding? The way they're saying it is that they're going to go ahead and postpone this. They're going to talk to Dr. Benavides and then I mean I'm sorry to Dr. Science and try to get the rest of the people in, in any department, in any place that has gone that extra mile or doing the duties. That's how the motion reads right now. But the duties that were given were to these two individuals and I think, I think we, we do it. And, 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 we're I, doing it. and I understand, but I have a motion, correct legal, I have a motion, I have to follow up with this, I have a second, so I have to vote. All those indicating by saying aye? Okay, but just, just let aye. me understand okay, the motion. Right. What was the motion? The motion is to postpone this item, to bring it back on the 28th, to include these two individuals and any other individuals in these departments that are helping complete the jobs. In order for them to do the extra jobs that Dr. Science is giving them, they're giving their assignments to others and other people are helping and it's a team effort. And so that's the idea so that we don't leave anyone out and so we continue to create uh, the team spirit uh, that needs to be created when someone is not available, like Mr. Trevino is not available at this time. That, that's how the motion reads. So, and I have a all second. Right. All those indicating by saying aye? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, so then the next one is with a general uh, generated list, correct? Okay, number two under human resources, approval of 2021-22 school year staff allocation guidelines. I move to approve items two, three, and four. Sorry? I move to approve items two, three, and four. Okay. On item number two, uh, I would like to uh, add a few clarifications. On page 336, Okay, that's all. So I'm going to take his motion, but are you okay with the changes? What are the changes? Okay. Or, or, or whatever, she's because she's going to say something, that's why. Okay, then I'll second just item number two. Okay, so then you can go ahead, go, Dr. Okay. Benavides. On page 336, that each high school uh, have a college readiness clerk slash TSI. I know Dr. Sainz told me that that was uh, correct, but I just want to make sure that they have that because with CCMR and the accountability, we need that college readiness clerk. On page 339, for the special schools, uh, instead of the special schools having two counselors, uh, I would like to recommend that they have one assistant principal, the way they do now, and one counselor. On page 345, for the police department, on line 16, fleet management service operator, line 18, a specialist for the first offender program, and line 11, investigator for the district anti-bullying, that we just add the statement, reduced by attrition or reassignment. Who are those positions? I don't know the names. I'm just a fleet manager, super uh, service operator, uh, specialist for the first offender. Are you okay with these recommendations, Dr. Tanks? Because I don't think we're here to micromanage any department or anything like that. I well, the, the recommendations from administration are as they stand in, in this item. Wow. Okay, so, so then I have a, a motion by Mr. Garza and a, and a second by Dr. Navia so with, with those changes. There was those... just, there's another one on page 346 with the departure of Mr. Trevino and the death of Mr. Homer Hinojosa to add a chief financial officer. What, what number is that one, Doc? Uh, page 336. 
A what? A CFO? A chief, yeah, a chief financial officer. So what happened to the positions that we dissolved the superintendents, assistant superintendents? Now we're bringing in somebody else? Where are we saving money here? That doesn't make any sense to me. Or well, we, we do we have ha an assistant superintendent for administration and finance and student HR. Okay, so, so guys, then, I have a motion and a second with, with those changes. All, all those in favor the came by saying aye. Did, aye. Uh, Go ahead. Who's going to? Uh, did, did you mention also there was like by attrition on the on the wellness coordinator? By attrition. It was I, I did ask Dr. Signs, but she said that it, it was already. It is indicated it is on the notes that it's by uh, Only attrition, by attrition. Or reassignment. Can yes. we clarify what attrition and reassignment? Uh, if, 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 if everybody's, if, this means if the person needs the position will not get filled. Am I correct? Yes, correct. but it correct. but if it is a reassignment, that person can be reassigned whenever a position becomes available that they are qualified for. And if they don't qualify for that position? Then we wait until it's attrition. The last one, which I didn't add, was the specialist for planetarian, that it require a teacher's uh, certificate. Okay. Okay, so Dr. Science, can you just briefly restate those again, those changes yeah, that just she maybe. just mentioned? Uh, as I wrote them down, it is to keep the college readiness clerk, TSI clerk, which they do have. They have either a readiness clerk or a TSI clerk, and I, I think you were just asking for clarification, clarification. that they have yes. one or the other. And you have which it, Which that yes. one is not a change then, yeah. right? Then the other one was in the special schools, the early college high schools, one of the things that uh, had been a need is to have two counselors at, instead of an assistant principal. And the change that Dr. Benavides is talking about, and please correct me if I say anything, I just took the notes right now, Dr. Benavides, is that they have one assistant principal and one counselor instead of the two counselors and no assistant principal. Then uh, there was three positions in the police department, and I don't, let me go to that page, because we did, you did not mention them. 345. Let me go to that page. It's page 345, line 16, line 18, and line 11. You also had a registered clerk, is that correct? Pardon me? I'm, just, I'm asking oh, Dr. Benavides. There was a registered clerk or a counselor's clerk? I'm just doing it for my notes for the minute. On which one? Uh, no, there was not a clerk. No. no, I don't okay. think so, Mr. Salinas. Okay. Okay, line 16 is the fleet management service operator manager. Line 18 is the specialist first offender. There are two of those positions. And are those, that means two? So what? No, one. Are, are you say, you're saying one. One. And then uh, line 11, was it 11? Yes. Yes, 11 is investigator district anti-bullying. And my, 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 my deal for voting no is because I know that as board members, we're policy makers and our only uh, employee should be the superintendent. And I don't feel comfortable because we're not here to micromanage in any department. And I feel that at this point, we should trust our administration for the work that they're doing. I would also like to add, uh, on page 358, uh, just because of the whole pandemic, I think and I feel the need that we need to increase our custodians at all levels based on the square foot. I, I, I mean, there are some campuses that have only one custodian. Paredes is one no. of them. I, I, apologize. I apologize, SP, it's because they were moving me too fast, but I did have that one, uh, and that is to look at the number of custodians based on the square footage and the number of students that are enrolled. For that one, Dr. Science? The way we have the, the, yes, the way we have the staffing allocation here is based on uh, student enrollment. But, but by a Because path. the square footage of a building, and if you, if you can recall, a lot of our buildings are not at full capacity. But and that's but why we're doing it based on student enrollment. Yeah, but they're being used, Dr. Science. Pardon me? They're being not used. For example, uh, I know Mr. Cantu just mentioned Paredes Elementary right now. They only have one custodian. They have one. If that's we can a, do it maybe a with a, a combination, whether yes. it be square footage but, but, and student enrollment. Asking, but, but did you say two or, or one? They only have one. Based on square feet. Yes, but bed. you didn't give a, an, like, a, like one or two or three. You're just saying depending on the, okay. Based on, the on square, square footage. Of the building that's being used. And enrollment. 
I, I, I think know. with with the, the thing yes. is that the need is there. We're bringing kids back. We need to our custodians need to be sanitizing, and I think they need to the help on that one. I I agree. 100%. We will definitely. We will, uh, th well, that one we do have it based on student enrollment, which of course does also take into account square footage. Yes. Okay, so I have a and motion. Which one? I'm sorry. Uh, which ahead, one? Ahead. Which one did we mention that said teacher certificate? I heard teacher certification. Teacher certification for the spe uh, specialist at the planetarium. The specialist at the planetarium. So would, it was. Um, so in, in approving that, does that affect current people who hold these positions? I'm just curious. The last thing I would want is for it to affect any one of our employees. The, the, the basis was well. Yeah, most of the most of the positions that we're talking about, we're saying they they are eliminate through attrition or reassignment. Except for that one. That one says. Well, I, that one. Well, we don't have that one on um, on our list, so I doesn't have anything because that's not one that we were recommending. Okay, so I have a motion and a second with the changes that SP has, and 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 Dr. Benavides. All those indicating by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Nay also. Okay, motion passes. Can we pass. have a list, Dr. Science, of the, of the people? Motion passes. Of all these people, please, in positions. For the record, uh, the request of Mr. Cantumis needs to be honored there. Okay, so under human resources number three, approval of the stipend request for elementary soccer league coaches. A motion. A motion. Second. And a second. All those in favor again by saying aye. 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 Question for legal, since it's just random, I don't have to open for public hearing, correct? Thank you, guys. Number four, under human resources, approval of the stipend request for electronic sports, a sports for sponsors. That's how it reads. And now a motion? Motion. And a second? Do you have a second? Second. I have a second. All those in favor, again, by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. At this time, it is 726 and under section code uh, 551071, 551072, and 551074. <coughs> Going to executive session. It is 9:40, and we are out, out of executive session, and we'll be going back to letter C, business and finance, number seven and eight, which was the approval of payment for consultant services fee to oversee storm damages related to Hurricane Hannah, and the approval of payment for consultant services fee to oversee the storm damages. So I'll need a motion on those two. I so move to approve, as discussed in the executive session, as per legal. I have a motion. Now a second. Second. Okay, I have a second. All those in favor, can pass say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. Now we go back to letter H, which is personnel, and I'll need a motion. I so move to approve per under personnel items one, two, and three as discussed in executive session. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Chow for items one, two, and three. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, second, those in favor of the came by saying aye. Abstain. Here for the note, Blanca, Mr. Gavis is abstaining on which number, Mr. Gavis? Item one. On number one only. Okay, all those in favor of the came by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Now I'll need a motion for items four through eight. Mr. Mm -hmm. Board President, are those the grievances? I'm not, I'm not sure, I don't have an agenda. Uh, on number four? Number four. I move to take the superintendent's recommendation on item number four. Okay, so I have a motion uh, for item number four. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, again, by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion passes. Next be items five, six, and seven. Mr. Board President and members of the board on items number five and six, uh, as board counsel, I recommend that the board take no action. Okay, so that's a recommendation for legal. Do I have a motion? So moved. So I have a motion. Can I have a second? Okay. I'll second, Mr. Ochoa. All those in favor of the campus saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. It is uh, 741. Nine. 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 <laughs>